What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today. Today we're looking at the Zhiyun, Zhiyun, I don't know, everybody says it differently. Crane 2, this isn't the V2, this is the actual Crane 2. There's three versions out now, there's the first generation, then the V2, which had a little bit different mounting mechanism, and then the Crane 2, which is an entirely new redesign. But first, let's get into the unboxing. All right, so taking a look at the specs, the Crane 2 actually has a payload of seven pounds, which is pretty good because that's almost double over the old Crane V2. And that means you can put a pretty heavy camera and lens on this, which is pretty awesome because that means you can almost get away with using this over something like the Ronin M. It takes three batteries. You can get basically 18 hours of runtime. And I've tested this out and I basically have not charged this thing and it's still pretty much at half. And I've probably used it for more than two days, maybe almost three days straight. So that's pretty awesome. Unlike the previous model, this has an OLED display and that allows you to see what mode you're in, the battery life, and also different settings. And uh, we'll talk about different settings and how you can actually change the settings or even view the settings of your camera. On the back here, we have a joystick, a mode button, a record button, and also your mode and adjustment dials, as well as the elephant in the room, which is the giant wheel on the side which is for doing follow focus. But right now that only works with Canon cameras. It comes with a really nice hard case, uh, perfectly fits everything you need with some extra cubbies for extra batteries. Also inside the case, you'll find this little mini tripod, which is super nice and convenient to have because you can set it down anywhere. But it also has a quarter 20 thread on the bottom, which means you can pretty much mount it on any tripod. It also has a feature when you turn it off, uh, it's like a gradual shutdown. So when you turn it off, uh, if your camera's not really balanced all that perfectly, it's not gonna smash the lens into the body. It just slowly eases it down. And on this version, we actually have a tripod quick release plate. And believe it or not, this will actually fit a Manfrotto tripod head. Not all of them, just some of them, but that makes it really convenient. So you can just leave the base plate on the camera, take it off and drop it onto a tripod. So let's jump into the different modes. By default, it starts off in pan lock mode, which allows you to pan the camera, but not tilt. Then we have lock mode, which leaves the camera locked into one position, and you basically move the gimbal around and the camera will just stay facing that direction. Then with the double click, we have follow mode, which allows you to pan up and down and basically anywhere you put it. And then with the triple click, it goes into selfie mode. Now I've had this gimbal for about two weeks now, and I've used it on a few different things. Uh, I flew it to Halifax this past weekend and shot a music video with it. And I can't show any of the footage from that because the video's not released yet. But the really nice thing that I found is I was able to actually throw this into my carry-on luggage and still be able to use the same weight of cameras that I would use on the Ronin M. Anyway, I want to show you some footage from this thing. I went out on a portrait shoot with a model and we actually shot some photos, but I brought this along and we shot a little cool behind the scenes thing, so check it out. Okay, as I mentioned before, this thing does have a follow focus on the side. And right now it only currently works with Canon cameras. So like the 5D Mark III, 5D Mark IV, the Canon 60, the 6D Mark II. And you can actually also change all your settings on the display on the back and be able to change your ISO, your f-stop, your shutter speed, all from the back of the gimbal. And you can start and stop record at the back of the gimbal. That also works on Panasonic and Sony right now, just the record button. But hopefully with future firmware updates, we'll be able to have follow focus on the other cameras. And what's also cool is if you're using the Metabone Speed Booster, you should be able to get full control over Canon lenses on both of those cameras as well. Okay, so getting into the menu inside the gimbal, we have low, medium, and high power for the motor. So heavier camera obviously needs higher power. 
and obviously lighter cameras need lower power. Go back out. We also have the camera type. So depending on you have Canon, Sony, or Panasonic, you just choose that. Uh, the gimbal goes limp. You're gonna have to turn it off and on, but we've got calibrate, a bunch of different settings, and then sensitivity. All right, so taking a look at the ZY Play app, we'll open it up here. You have to download this from the App Store. It works on Android and iOS. First thing you're gonna do is go connect to your device and it's gonna show up in the list here on Bluetooth. If you haven't paired it before, you're gonna to have to sync it up, but it's actually pretty seamless and works really well. And in here you can see we've got kind of our same settings that we would if you had the little cell phone handheld gimbal. The only difference is you don't have the camera showing on here. So at the top, you can see we're connected to Bluetooth and we have the battery life of the actual gimbal, which is 57%. So up here we have our settings. This is the main spot you're gonna be sitting. For some reason, it doesn't really load in the window correctly. You gotta scroll up, but these are the default settings. Um, I actually have some custom settings that work really well. I'll talk about that later. Close that out. In here, we have our different options. So we can do time lapse. We can do moving time lapse, which I have not tried yet, but it probably works really well with this because it does with the Smooth 2 and the Smooth Q gimbals for the smartphones. And down here, just a couple other options. We also have remote control, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can choose this and use this as an actual joystick to change the gimbal. Now, what we wanna do is change the settings because I'll show you how to slow this down and make it run a lot better. So in here we have follow rate. So that's the speed at which it's gonna follow. And I'm gonna slow this down to about 80. That was on the tilt side of the follow. The roll I'm gonna leave because we rarely ever use the roll. And the pan, I'm gonna slow that down to about 30. So once you've got your settings that you like, you hit save. And at the bottom it says pattern saved. And now you can actually go and use the gimbal and it'll be a lot smoother. You can see there's a lot more smoother action to it. It's not as intense as it would be when it's set to default. Okay, so once the phone and app is connected to the gimbal and on top of your camera, you go to this little option here, you go to application mode and change it to phone camera. Hit confirm and it's gonna launch the camera on the phone. And basically you go down to this little target here. Let's see if I can draw a box around my face here. So basically anything inside this box will now track. I don't know how well it's tracking, but it should work. Let's see if it follows me around the room here. I think it already lost me. This might work better if you have a better phone. Right now all I have is the 5S because I sold my iPhone 7 to buy the iPhone 10, which pre-orders come out this week. Yeah, it doesn't really look all that smooth. Maybe working. I do see it turning, it's just very choppy. All in all guys, I'm really impressed with this gimbal. I think it's probably the best on the market that you can get for the price, especially if you have a heavier camera like the 5D Mark IV and some bigger like Sigma lenses. The old Crane or the V2 don't really quite have enough power for that. And if you need something heavier, you can use this. I've actually been able to balance my Canon C200B on this thing and it handled it no problem. And it's pretty wild that this thing can do that. This is definitely the only gimbal on the market right now that can handle that much weight. And like I said before, it's a pretty good contender with something like the Ronin M for being able to handle the amount of weight that it can handle. Also being able to change the settings from the handle is something that no other gimbal has. Uh, right now it's only working with Canon, but eventually when it comes out with other cameras, that's gonna be key because then you don't even have to touch the camera. It's all controlled from the back. So the only issue I have with this gimbal right now is the custom settings. And if you load them up on the app, you can set your speed and stuff like that. I really like to have my speed set really low and not as sensitive because that way it just kind of like doesn't really move when I do slight movements and it gives you kind of a smoother more cinematic look right now when you turn the gimbal off it reverts back to the original settings and you have to reload the app up and sync it in order for it to load up those settings anyway if you want to get one of these I'll put a link in the description thanks to the guys at Zhiyun for sending me this to review I think that when they come out with firmware for this thing for the other cameras this thing's going to be legendary there's no other gimbals out there like it that can do the stuff that this does and I think it's even better than the Ronin M and I'm probably going to find myself using this a lot more than the Ronin M except for when I have to use you know bigger cameras or something like that but uh, yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. See you in the next one.